I'd rather hear about your time volunteering at the homeless shelter and yep. the stories that you can tell there 100%. rather than that dark lights out approach that you had to do single engine on the carrier. Most pilots don't understand what career opportunities are available in the world of aviation. They're making career decisions based on advice from friends or posts on internet forums. Meaning they are taking huge risks with their livelihood without having all the details. This podcast was created to help you understand the aviation industry so you can find your dream job. Let's get ready for pushback. Here's your host and my dad, Nick Fialka. Welcome to Ready for Pushback. I'm your host as always, Nick Fialka. I'm so stoked you're joining me. Here we are on our third of three, the top three things that an interviewer is looking for in a candidate. And this number three is empathy. And I want you to know that this is probably the most important part. A person who understands what empathy is, can show empathy, this is the type of person that will be a great fit at an airline. It will be a great fit in a Part 135 operation. It'll be a great fit in a Part 91 organization because a person that is empathetic can really connect with a customer. And a person who can connect with a customer can maintain and retain a customer. And that is the type of pilot that these recruiters want to hire. So it's short, it's sweet, it's simple, but it's important. So listen up, internalize it. And one thing I'll tell you, if you want to learn more about it, just hop onto the YouTube world and type in TED Talk and type in empathy and listen. It is so important. It is really, really valuable. I think you'll really enjoy it. Before we get into the interview, there's just a little bit of housekeeping. I would love to chat with you. If you have questions for me, send me an email. If you think I should interview a company or somebody really interesting, send me an email. I'd love to reach out to them. I'd love to interview them and have that conversation. And third, if you yourself would like some free coaching, come on the show, have a conversation about what your path forward in the world of aviation could look like, then do the same thing. Send me an email. My email address is podcast at spitfireelite.com. And don't worry if you didn't write it down, it's in the show notes. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the interview. Number three, my favorite one. Yeah. Yeah. Number three in the acronym of ACE, how to ACE your interview is empathy. Mm. And um, I, that is exactly what airlines are looking for. To me, it's the key personality trait that helps you build the bridge to that person that's the opposite cultural fit than you, or the maybe that's not the right word, but the person who is that polar opposite from you. Empathy for how they arrived at their point of view. Like it's going to be based on their life experiences. You know, where did they grow up? Who were their parents? Who were their mentors and their influencers? Well, they're all different than yours. And you both arrived at this stage in life with different viewpoints. And so empathy is the first step. And let me do my best to understand how you arrived at that point. Yep. Understanding how another person feels and listening builds connection. And I think that because there's a lot of lip service to empathy, there's just so sure. much lip service to it. I think that really diving in on it and understanding it, it's more introspection than anything else. Sure. And it also bleeds into vulnerability again. But empathy is not sympathy, right? Correct. Like, oh man. I'm so sorry you're getting divorced. That's at least you were married once. Like that's not empathetic, right? right but right. like, gosh, I can't imagine how that feels. And I can't imagine what you're going through and anything I can possibly do. I'm here for you no matter what. All I want to do is try to solve your problem. Sure. That's all I want to do. Like I want to tell the flight attendant what she needs to do so she can get her job done. Cause I'm a man and that's what I do. <laughs> and that is so hard yeah. to flip. And my wife says it all the time. She's like, do you want to tell me how to do everything else too today? Like, <laughs> I've got, I got 10 minutes for you to make your list of things you want, want to tell me how to do. I was like, oh no, here we go. She's awesome. She is awesome. Uh, we teach that empathy needs to be executed. You know, you have to execute empathy. What does that look like? You got to go do it. 
you yeah. know, and you've got a disgruntled passenger that wants to go back to the gate, you know, well, the easy answer and the, and the, and the thing that you and I spend a lot of time with our military brethren who are so mission focused mission. is to go, no, 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 no. We're now safety focused and we're customer service focused. However, you still got big decisions to make. You got 176 people on that airplane. 202 on the Airbus 321. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Fair enough. <laughs> With a tray table. Uh, so the idea is, and this is, you and I, we've gone round and round with clients on this, is that, uh, oh, I, I need you to go, as selfish as that sounds, you don't know what that passenger's going through. I need you to go empathize with what that person's going through, then make your decision. Yeah. So find out. Yeah. You know, what if they just got the call that their kid passed away? Absolutely. You know what I mean? Lord have mercy. Guess what? I'm going back to the gate. hundred percent. Going back. But what if they're annoyed with the delay? You know, like maybe they missed a sales meeting. Okay. Yep. I do empathize with that. That's our fault as an operation. Maybe not you as the pilot, but it's the operation's fault. Perhaps, perhaps it's weather. But the point is you empathize with that. And then you make your decision. It doesn't mean you have to go back to the gate. It just means you now have the data you need to make the decision. That's right. That is so important because a lot of people just want to pull out the old jump to conclusions mat right. and go from point A to point B. <laughs> I'm and gonna steal that one. That's good. I, yeah, thanks. <laughs> I got a million. I can steal lines from any movie. The idea here is like to be curious, right? Sure. Like to find it, to allow um, compassionate question asking to lead you to understanding. And once you have that understanding, you can use that to, if you need to make a decision, you can make a decision. If somebody needs assistance, you can figure out the best way to help provide that assistance. All those things, you know, what drives me nuts. Let me tell you what drives me nuts. All right. I'm sitting in these interview consulting PICs, right? Precision interview consulting. And I've done I think I've done nine days in a row right now, something like that. I sit on my back. For those of you that know me, like I'm on the back porch. I got a cigar in my hand (laughs) and we're just going through. They're scheduled for two hours. I never finish in two hours. It always goes over because I just am a talker and I'm a little obnoxious. But what drives me crazy is when somebody is giving an answer and they say, well, I have a lot of empathy for that. And here's the list of how I have empathy. And I just want to like reach out and choke them because like, (laughs) That's not empathy. Like saying that you have empathy for something like is I want you to have enough self-awareness to be able to articulate that empathy with empathetic statements, because telling me that story doesn't really prove that you're empathetic. It just proves that, you know, the word empathy is important. Right. And that is obnoxious. What were your actions? Yes. Did you, how to show me how you execute show me. empathy? Yes, man. Like what's funny is when you're doing it in life, when we're on the jet bridge and there's that mom with two little ones and the, like the twin babies, mom is crying. Babies are crying. She's got each person gets two carry ons So she's got six bags or whatever. And she's got the stroller and it's awful. And you're like, give me the babies. Like I'll hold, or let me fold the thing or like whatever it is. Like that's that. Yes. And you could walk by her. You could walk your happy ass right by her. Yep. And get on the plane, close the door and get out of here. Cause you got to do pre-flight. You got to program the box or you could spend 10 minutes with her. You walk her to her seat, see if she needs anything. If she needs something from the flight tent. She could go get it. Yes. And you could be three minutes late off the gate, but you know what? We got that mom set up and that's important. That, yeah, that got a great story I can share with you later if you want about uh, something uh, almost similar to that. When, as I was a brand new captain, it was kind of fun. Yeah, it's true. Like all that translates to being on the line. It really does. Mm-hmm. And so it's not just lip service. And if you treat that, if you're going into an interview and you're going to treat it like that, then you're just not going to have a good time at the company because you're not going to like, it's just not going to be your thing. And like a lot of people want it for the money. Who doesn't I spent four years at a regional airline getting no money? <laughs> I'd like to get a paycheck. Yeah. Be nice to have electricity for 30 days straight for once. Yeah. Well, now the rest of us are working on a flow through program back to the, uh, the <laughs> back to the envoy and PSA. <laughs> <laughs> Those, uh, oh my gosh. Crazy pay rates that are going on. I might open a cowboy church. There you go. If I can do that, you can do that. All right. So to recap, I think that kind of walks us through, right? Those are the three most important things 
that the airlines are looking for in a pilot. And so let's re-talk about it, right? Authenticity. Yes. Ooh, can't even say it. Yes. Right? What's the best version of yourself? Mm -hmm. And how are you awesome and real? Because <laughs> if you're not real, hit the bricks. Yeah, I would say, but how you define awesome is important. Mm -hmm. So some people think that how awesome they are is based on how everything you've accomplished accomplished military squad or yeah like that. oh my I god maybe that's not what you need to go that's you right go, you know maybe awesome is that um i'd rather hear about your time volunteering at the homeless shelter and yep. the stories that you can tell there 100 rather than that dark lights out approach that you had to do single engine onto the carrier yeah because everybody has that one. Even the helicopter guys have that one. It's am amazing, huh? Yeah. Yeah. There I was. Osama bin Laden was running away from me as I <laughs> approached him. I was like, didn't you fly Harriers? What? <laughs> <laughs> sure. um, all right. So authenticity number one, culture, right? Find a way to articulate how you're going to make that company better based on what it wants to be how do you fit into their puzzle? Right. And I'll say it's never too late to go live out those experiences that answer that question. Like if you're a year or two out, you know, you've got some shoot, even if you're months out, if you know, you've got some time, get out there and volunteer, like in something, get uncomfortable. Dude, let me tell you what, two nights ago in a PIC, I had a guy, he's throwing bags on the ramp for FedEx. He's been, he flies for Republic and he's been throwing bags for 18 months, 18 months working the night shift all night long, throwing bags just to see what it's like to work at FedEx. Wow. Dude, uh, I couldn't believe it. Yes. The guy used to work in the oil fields. You're kidding me. He was the coolest dude. We're gonna spend 15 minutes talking about this. Let's yeah. go. Yeah. You guys want a job? Go work for that company. The guy's an airline pilot throwing bags He's talking about how it's the hardest job he's ever had. And he worked on an oil rig. Like, I love it. Yes. You want to know what the culture is like? Go live it. Yes. Go be it. I love that. God. I, it reminds me, um, uh, recently, uh, Tron had a family member who, so I think it was Tron's niece, was interviewing it uh, as a flight attendant at a uh, job. And she looked to Tron for advice. And he goes, here's what you're going to do. And he bought her three plane tickets to do the, the original Texas two-step, not oh. the way the airline, just to go ride. And he made her go talk to each flight attendant along the way and tell them what she was doing. She learned so much about Southwest culture. And then when she interviewed, she was able to just share that experience. I mean, it, it only took a day. Yeah. But she was able to share that experience and the, the indoctrination that she got into the Southwest culture during that time. Um, number one, it proved to her that that is a place that she wants to work. And number two, the interviewers just loved it. Absolutely. I bet they did. Yeah. I love that. Great advice. I would like to interview for sport. Yes. That's, that's completely, my wife is so frustrated after I got my job and I was like, I'm going to keep interviewing. She's like, you got to stop. And so anyway, I was sending something off at FedEx Kinko's the other day. And, you know, I can say I do not fly for FedEx, but I feel like I could interview there tomorrow and just have a great time. But the guy, Colin, who works over there, right? He and I talked about the Purple Promise for 15 minutes. Yeah. And we talked about all the different things about FedEx and like, he was interested that I was a coach, but also he told me his story and that's the least you can do is just go over there to your local UPS store, your local FedEx. If you can get in front of those people and chit chat with them and find out that's where you build a little bit of understanding and you might get a story or two out of it as well. So I don't know. You're going to need all those because the pressure's on. All right. So authenticity, number one, culture, number two, number three, empathy, right? How do you understand people's feelings and don't be fake about it? Cause it drives me nuts. <laughs> exactly. So those, I think, are key takeaways, right? Make sure you can articulate it. Make sure you can do it well. And you'll be an awesome pilot. And you'll be hired in a heartbeat by everybody. Nowhere in there does it talk about how uh, rails you can fly in ILS. Yeah. Because that's the expectation of a professional pilot. You're going to fly a good ILS. Yeah. You're going to be sitting in the room with 20 guys and gals that are ready to interview. And guess what? They're all great pilots. Not a single one of them are a piece of crap. Exactly. Not one. Not one. It's amazing. Yeah. Who knew? <laughs> they would call only good pilots. Yeah. And now you've got to prove yourself. That's right. Because some of those people are going away empty handed. That's true. Yeah. yeah. It's still a tough interview, especially Delta and FedEx. Those interviews are tough. And yeah. You got to be prepared. Dude, Frontier, I feel like is tough. Frontier um, is tough. Absolutely. Spirits, spirits, interesting. I wouldn't say tough. It's super interesting. 
the regional airlines, man, those guys, they'll, ri- they'll hammer you. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Technical questions. Yeah. It's nuts. Anyway. I did a warm up interview at a regional airline yeah. and I did not pass the technical <laughs> question. <laughs> That's a true story. That's a true story. But yeah, no, I'll tell you, uh, you know, JetBlue. You, oh, yeah. You better be able to, you know, it's an expectation that you know every company's core values that you're interviewing with. Oh, yeah. JetBlue, you better know it like an emergency procedure. Oh, yeah. You better be able to recite them and yep. explain what they mean to you because it's just really important to them. And I love it. I, I love that it is. Yeah, so. I do too. You know, I had to fly a sim at my regional interview. Wow. Yeah. It had been five years out of the cockpit and it made me fly a sim, fly an approach in a sim. How did that go? Uh, it was a piston airplane that I had never flown. I'd never flown any piston is all turbine time. Right. <laughs> so I've never done that. And there were all these like levers. I had no idea what they did. And I looked at the guys like, I'm not going to pass this. I don't know what any of this does. And he said, you put your hands on the yoke. You fly the approach. I'll adjust the power settings. It's like, Oh, thank God. Yeah, that's awesome. Oh man. All right. So now it's time for story time. Uh oh. So every show we're gonna dive in on our guests and get them to tell us a really fun story about their past. Something hopefully having to do at least on the periphery w- with aviation. But so Bill Sims story time. Oh gosh. So you queued up a story in my mind a second ago, and I'll, I'll share that one. You talk about these airline moments. Like I, I fortunately, hopefully, I never have to interview again. But if I did. I would tell this story. I mean, that's apologies in advance. It's uh, hopefully I'm not coming across, look at me and all that kind of stuff. It was a great moment. I really enjoyed it. But long story short is I'm in Charlotte. I've got a full plane of passengers. We're about seven, eight minutes from our pushback time. And the flight attendant pops in. She's like, hey, sir, we're missing a wheelchair passenger. And I was like, what do you mean we're missing a wheelchair passenger? And as I stand up to oh, no. talk to the flight attendant, I see the ground service manager, you know, these are the uh, customer service manager is already on board. And he briefs me that he goes, uh, yeah, we can't find the uh, person in the wheelchair. So the family, we told the family they can go without him or, or oh, get no. off. And I oh, just go, gosh. wait, 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 what's and, and For I, real? I see three people walking up the airplane, getting off. And the lady that I see is in tears, you know, as she's walking up. So exactly. they lost the person. So I go, well, there's a third party company that you hire that when you book an airline ticket, the you know, well, anyway, this third party contractor dropped the ball and they didn't get him from his other gate to this gate. So okay. uh, the funny part of this story oh is all gosh. just so I can say, I got to have that stoic captain moment. And I got to say my line that I've always wanted to say my whole life. I got to say it. You can't handle day. the truth. Almost not oh. that one, but it went like this. That <laughs> I see the lady in tears coming up. Here's this, you know, young professional customer service manager. And he, he's doing what he's tasked to do, which is get the airplane out on time. Oh, I yeah. get it. Yeah. Right. But I'm flying to new Orleans. Okay. I'm, I'm not flying into a hub where everyone's going to miss the connection. I understand the big picture. And he looks at me and he goes, yep, they're getting off. So I go, where's the wheelchair? And I look at my watch and he goes, Captain, it's D minus five. You got to go. <laughs> that means you got to leave in five minutes. Yeah. And I go, and I got to say it. I got to say it. I looked at him like very stoically, like I'm looking at you now. And I go, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> and, I go, and I go, I go, oh I, 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 it was so fun. It was oh so fun. I, I just, I, you know, it was, it was so hilarious. And I just, I was the, I think I was the only one having fun in the moment. Uh, and I, yeah. There's and a lost guy. There's a lot going on. And, but I'm standing in front of first class, right? So like everyone's, uh, you know, listening to this and I go, I'm going to find a guy in a wheelchair. Yeah. And so oh by this gosh. point, the wife comes up to me and I kind of put my hand out to, to kind of stop her from walking. She's just, she's a wreck. She's in tears. Yeah. And my, I think it was her first plane ride ever, or oh maybe flown gosh. once 20 years ago kind of thing. Oh and you no. know, her husband's older and I go, ma'am, does he have a cell phone? She goes, yeah, I go call him, tell him to look up and tell me what gate he's at. So she did. And it takes seconds to find this out. And the gate that he was at was like five gates down. Oh, so perfect. I go walking up the jet bridge. And before I even get two gates down, I see a young kid, like an 18 year old kid pushing a wheelchair at a hundred miles an hour oh, in a full sprint. Man. I go, I bet that's my guy. So here I am in my captain's uniform. I stand in front of him and I, and I go, stop. I go, are you Dave? And he looks at me and he's like, he's like, yeah, they left me. I go, oh. Dave, I'm not going to leave without you. Oh, I got you. Yeah. And um, so this is where the story should end, right? Like it should, you know, yay, we got the guy in the wheelchair yeah. and we can go. We leave sure. on time. Well, by this point, his wife was off the plane and so was an, like an adult mom with like a, a two-year-old child, two and a half-year-old. He could walk. But anyway, imagine this. He's sitting on top of the rollerboard. As I go back to the airplane, I'm pushing the wheelchair now 
And the kid that's sitting on top of the suitcase, he, right as I approach, you know, like, hey, we got him. We're good. Let's go. Let's go. You know, everything's great. The kid does this like inverted flip and oh, no. falls off the suitcase square on his head and lands oh. on the floor. Oh, no. And right as he hits, I see this whole thing happen. Right as he hits the floor, I just instinctively as a dad who's dropped his kid a time or two, right? Get him. Go get him. <laughs> I immediately scoop him up, but yep. he's laying in my arms and I look and we catch eyes and I go, I go, uh, hey, buddy, do you want to go to New Orleans? And he looks at me, shakes his head, no. And I go, <laughs> well, we're going. <laughs> no. And I go, let's like, no, go. Get me out of here. And so I lead the whole family back on the airplane. I come walking in. I got, so the wheelchair's being pushed behind me. I got a baby in my arms and I walk in the first class. It's just, I know the passengers who did hear everything were just kind of like, what in the world is going on? So I got to tell you, even the customer service manager was like, you know, nodding in approval. But he was doing the best that he could, that he knew, you know, was trained to do, which is get the flight out on time. So all that, I pushed back maybe about two minutes late, but we arrived on time. And, um, and the chief pilot still called you. <laughs> he could have. He could have. Yeah, because could've. they want, they want to know. But I will plug for American. Any chief pilot that we have would have been like, all right, Solid. Hey, you know why we have the policy, but I like what you did. So no of course, foul. Of they, course. they would have backed me up, but it is problematic. But anyway, so yeah, that's my, uh, oh my God. that's my stoic. I'm not going anywhere moment. I got to use the line. The was, glorious, <laughs> the glorious and respected life of an airline pilot. <laughs> but, I it mean, was, but it really was one of the more fun moments I've yeah. had at the airline because I just know that I'm pretty sure that family will not forget that. And that will always be their impression of not just me, but of American Airlines. They know? certainly will not forget <laughs> Dave being lost at the, right. the gate, <laughs> five there. gates down for an hour. <laughs> exactly. Oh my God. Yeah. Well, hey, wait, a, like, that's it. Like how to turn something that is a complete disaster into a success. Like that's <laughs> what it's all about. Awesome. Dude, thank you for being here. Of course. This is so fun. Yeah. I, you're one of my favorite people. Anytime I get to hang out with you, dude, it's not lies. It's true. (laughs) I appreciate that, man. All right. So that wraps us with Bill Sims, Spitfire Elite co-founder. And now we're going to go into uh, a little bit about Spitfire, right? So this show every single week is brought to you by Spitfire Elite Interview Consulting. And we're uh, the industry leader in aviation interview consulting. The idea here will eliminate the unknowns of the interview process to unlock what your true potential is. Our holistic approach uh, will help you land your dream job. And we've got hundreds of clients currently flying at major airlines. And that is really what it's all about. So we have over 30 coaches currently doing work day in and day out, getting people ready for their interviews. Uh, We're more than just interview prep. There's also uh, application review capabilities. We got, if you are getting ready to submit your application, you better polish that thing up and you better get it ready. And that is one thing that we can certainly help you with. If you need, you need, I'll just say, I did it. Everybody I know does it. You need the application review done because if you don't and you have an error, you'll never know and you're never going to get that call. And so you want the peace of mind that everything is polished and tight. So what do you get with the interview prep, right? The first thing we're going to start off with is academics. The academics are the best part where you learn the baseline of how to become a person that can articulate yourself, the idea of what it takes to put points on the board and what the interviewers are looking for. After you do our in-depth academics course, you'll gain access to the secret weapon, which is the uh, interview simulator, Spitfire interview simulator. It allows you to articulate yourself in front of your own computer and get real feedback from our coaches in real time. It's a really great tool that we offer. Now, from that, after you're doing your interview simulator, you roll in, you connect personally with our coaches. We have unlimited webinars. The price that you pay is exactly what you get for unlimited access to our webinars. Get into the precision coaching, get with guys like me, my buddy Casey, all the guys and gals that work with us. Super duper fun. It's just a great way to polish your skills and get uncomfortable. And that's what it's all about. If you're going somewhere that's got an FDLE, if you've got an SBI like FedEx, uh, Southwest, Frontier, those things, uh, we have flight deck leadership exercises. It prepares you. It's about a thousand times um, more stressful working with us than when you get to your actual interview. And that 
is where it really pays off. So the capstone to all this is the one-on-one mock interview. That is where you sit down with one of our coaches. You have an hour and a half with him or her, and you go one-on-one and you do an interview designed specifically for the airline that you're targeting. And it's going to make you brush off any remaining dust that might be on your sleeves and get you 110% ready. So if you're ready to move to the next level, go to www.spitfireelite.com. Uh, when you go to check out, uh, if you want to buy one of our a la carte uh, things like an application review or interview prep, uh, those a la carte services, use the uh, promo code podcast. That'll save you 10%. Or you can just go ahead and get our super discounted re- all-in-one package that has the app review and the interview prep. That is already super discounted in there. So check us out, www.spitfireelite.com. Let's throw the uh, coupon on that one too. The coupon on the, okay, yeah. roger that. You heard it here first. That is like brand new. Any of our services, use a promo code podcast and you'll save 10%. I think that's the only way to save 10% on the uh, all in. So that is super awesome. Thank you, Bill. All right. So questions and comments. You guys want to talk to us. You got questions about our guests. You got ideas for future guests. Maybe you think what I said is totally out of whack and I'm totally lame. Hit me up podcast at spitfireelite.com. If you got questions, I'll answer them on air. We're going to start a Q and a session uh, with me, uncle Nick, and we'll get those things answered for you. I'll send you a sticker. We're going to get some stickers made up. Send me an email, put your question or your comment in there or your idea for a person that you think should be on the show. Even if it's you, Put your address on there, man. I'll send you a, a sticker. It'd be sweet. Love to have you. We're building our website. We're building our LinkedIn page. Those things are going to come. But what you can do for us, like I'm giving you this advice, Bill's spending his time. We are so glad that you are. Whether or not you do Spitfire or not, we are actually just doing this because we love it. Uh, the added bonus is what we do, and we get to do it all the time. So the one thing I might need from you is to tell a friend and let them know about this place and give us a review. A five-star rating would be super awesome. And uh, But if you do give us a five-star rating, please write something in the comments, like I, even what your favorite aircraft is, because the algorithm, if you don't have a comment, they don't really like take it into consideration. So my goal is to make this the number one aviation podcast in the industry. There are a lot of them out there, but I think that this could be a lot of fun. So thanks for joining us. Ready for Pushback is out of here, man. And uh, I like our tagline, you know, solving the pilot shortage, one pilot at a time. Bill, thank you for being here. Thank you, sir. All right, brother. See ya. Hey, before I let you go, I need to mention one thing because a lot of people are asking me, can you do anything? Can you help me with this? And the answer is yes. At Spitfire Elite, we will make more millionaires this year than Major League Baseball will make in the next five years. Our company actually does this. It's called Spitfire Elite Interview Consulting. And you can find us over at SpitfireElite.com. Our clients, they call us the easy button for interview prep because everything you need to crush your interview is there in one spot. Whether it's application review or interview prep, all of it is covered. We've helped thousands of clients who are now flying at their dream jobs because our coaches gave them the one-on-one feedback that they needed to succeed on the biggest day of their life. The best part of Spitfire is our community. All Spitfire clients will get access to our private chats where they can work with each other and they can work with our coaches and get the latest information on all the airlines. If you'd like to make sure that you are 100% ready to go on your big day, there is only one choice. Everything you need is in one place and I think it's pretty affordable. You'll have to take a look for yourself. Just go over to SpitfireElite.com and check us out. Use the coupon code podcast and it'll save you 10%. And by the way, I will see you on the next episode. The statements made on this show are my own opinions and do not reflect, nor are they under any direction from my employer.